there are, are a number of really very important projects, very interesting projects, which helps us to begin to think about what I think is an incredibly important area for the future. I think that um, museums are in a very difficult position at the moment. They all, they're always in a difficult position, particularly acute at the moment. Um, clearly we all know that our funding in all areas of museums is under threat. Uh, we haven't got audiences who are powerful advocates for us. They come through the door and people will say, well, I've got X thousand visitors, they must be my supporters. I'm not sure that they are, they just come along. They're not people who are advocates for museums. And it strikes me um, that crowdsourcing is, if not an answer to a maiden's prayer, at least a very important part of the future. And I'm holding with you in terms of it's building stakeholders, it's building people who are engaged with us and who are our advocates. That's its potential. More than that, I think it has the potential, or this route has the potential to flip the kinds of things that museums are. Where traditionally, where a lot of people um, who sit on these great stores of stuff and the knowledge that goes with them, and we control who accesses it at any particular time. Uh, and that's a sort of power thing, as much as it's just an institutional thing. We actually quite like doing that, we can control all of this. I think we need to flip that on its head and to create organisation, I think this is what crowd um, sourcing has the potential to do, is to flip that on its head and make more make a more democratic landscape. Now, um, of course, obviously as a director general, I'm intensely resistant to anyone making decisions except me. Um, but then on the other hand, I think the golf course beckons and maybe this is a good way of <laughs> Maybe this is a good way of, of delivering the future. Actually, I think it's a way that's going to catch up with us and it's going to be there, whatever we do. Just a little um, example, though, the kind of stuff that can go magnificently wrong in the public sector. And believe me, most things go magnificently wrong in the public sector. It's an awful shock when something works. Um, we looked at a crowdsourcing project which was called Old Weather. It's something that the Met Office had begun to look at, and it involves taking the logbooks of naval vessels and transcribing the data into a database. Now, every, every so many hours, if you're on a naval vessel, you record the state of the weather. This data goes back 300 years in depth, and it is possible to reconstruct the state almost of the planet's um, weather systems uh, from this data. That's why the Met Office is interested. That's actually quite interesting uh, when you're looking at climate change. For us, we can see from that data where the Navy is deployed at any given time. And it's by no means easy to say on X day, the Navy had ships in these different places doing these different things. That actually is quite complicated to get at. This is the way you would get at it. So we thought about, right, let's continue this project, let's digitize the logs, gauge crowd sourcing, um, get people engaged with it, and we have a huge number of um, intensely interested people. Um, there are tens of thousands of people who are intensely interested in the Navy out there who are not engaged with. Get them engaged and we can get this data transcribed into a database. Brilliant. It's a great project. It could be done. Except that the National Archives does not play. The only people who can digitise this are us. And you're going to have to pay us 10 million quid for us to digitise it. Well, actually in a kind of way, I think this is owned by the public, uh, and that's what the National Archives is there to do, it's there to make it available to care for the public. So that's how the public sector goes wrong, it's about money, uh, and the shifting of wooden dollars around the public sector. Now I'm, I'm absolutely sure that your projects have done it better, and they've done it better because they're smaller in scale, uh, and they're more targeted, and ours is a, probably an overscaled project, but there is a scaling problem you quite rightly identify moving from um, small to medium size and then to really big projects where there's huge amounts of data uh, and huge amounts of information that can be quarried. So that's a sort of cautionary tale for us. It doesn't mean to say we're going to stop. It does need to say we've got to think about um, how we do this better. But I'm absolutely convinced uh, that this is one of the routes for museums not only um, to survive or to flourish in the future. We failed to seize these kinds of initiatives. Uh, we failed um, across a wide range of our, what we're trying to deliver.
there is a point that was made about uh, are we are we are we getting cheap labour? Yeah, of course we are. Um, you, you catalogued a part of the British Museum with Bronze Age material. Great. Um, but I remember my first job, which was cataloging material in the British Museum. I was kind of paid for that. Not well, but I was paid. Got to start on the so yes, we are doing that. I think we should be a, we should be ashamed of it, or pretend it isn't happening. It is happening. That's the way that the line is going to be. Just to turn to crowdsourcing, crowdfunding. I think again, it's going to be a very interesting area, and I think we're just all of us feeling our way forward. We haven't got enough data to say what works and what does not work. We have used it. We um, tried to raise £19,000 as a contribution towards the restoration of M33. It's a ship rather than a motorway, so it's, it's sexier and just. Um, out of a £2.5 million pound project, uh, and we did that on Indiegogo, we managed to raise, I think, just over £10,000. So it wasn't, it wasn't negligible, um, but it wasn't what we set out to do. I think. There's a number of reflections that float around that, which is, um, is it better to raise all of the funding through crowdsourcing with a very defined goal and a smaller, less ambitious goal? Maybe that we couldn't have raised 2.5 million. Secondly, what is the call to action? All marketing is about the call to action. And this is links to marketing. Well, say it's about call to action. But, you know, People look at a 2.5 million pound project and say, is my money really going to make a difference? I'm not sure it is, but that's a, that's a reaction that you can get. I think, absolutely right, how do you get the message out there? It's partially using a platform, a platform that people will go to, but I think it's also about the PR campaign that surrounds it. We put a huge amount of effort into a PR campaign. It was, the PR campaign was more successful than the crowdfunding. Um, so we got the message out there about what we were doing, we got it out into newspapers, articles in magazines, television, radio. We did quite a lot, um, helped by the fact that um, the Murdoch family were engaged in the funding of this pro project and therefore were encouraging their newspapers and television channels to support us. But still, we didn't get to the target. And I, th I think as we build up a series of data about um, crowdsourcing, we can start to see, we should be starting to break down what works, what doesn't, what, in what circumstances. We're trying again with the restoration of a painting, much smaller ask, we will see how that works. So we're trying different approaches to it, I think that's the challenge. So that's sort of rambly 10 minutes, of, but I thought it, what I wanted to do is to react what, to what was said, um, and also to bring some of our experiences to it, however unsuccessful some of them are. They will be successful in the future. Yes. As we learn from each other's practice. <laughs> yeah. I like to keep making the same mistakes. It's <laughs>